All right, welcome back from that um, report now to the discussion proper. The impact of fintech on the banking sector is still unfolding, but it is clear that this industry is undergoing a major transformation. They are disrupting the status quo and are forcing traditional banks to adapt or risk being left behind. In the future, we can see or expect to see even more innovation in the fintech space. New technologies such as blockchain and artificial intelligence will continue to be adopted by fintech companies and these technologies will have a profound impact on the banking industry. My guest, Olatsunji Igbalajobi, is the Chief Information Security Officer at Sierbet and is also a cybersecurity professional. Many thanks for joining me, Tunji, on Business Insights. Um, I'm here. Uh, good morning. All right, let's just get a bit of an overview uh, of the fintech industry and its role in shaping the future of finance in Nigeria. What do you really think? Yeah, um, no doubt uh, the fintech industry has played a very um, significant role uh, in shaping the future of finance in Nigeria. And it's not just only peculiar to Nigeria. Uh, we have seen the rapid uh, transformation um, in our financial sector you know, due to the influence uh, of technology and innovation from many startups. So uh, these are actually, you know, bringing, uh, you know, a lot of uh, 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 reaching out to the uh, the, uh, the unbanked, you know, the unserved people, uh, you know, the people in the remote area, uh, to also be able to, you know, participate in the financial inclusion. So there has been a very rapid increase in the financial inclusion as a result of uh, innovation that comes from fintech organization and. If you look at it, uh, you will agree with me that uh, you know financial inclusion is one of the very uh, ways that a fintech has actually shaped finance in Nigeria. Uh, you know, the uh, underbanked, the uh, uh, underserved. You know, people are not leveraging mobile payment platform. Uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending, uh, digital payment solution. You know, to be able to carry out financial services. So, uh, these are actually proving that uh, this is one industry that uh, you know. We need to really pay close attention at and you know increase in dig digital payment too you know there has been a lot of increase in digital payment from different innovation from different startups we have also seen an exponential uh you know uh growth in uh, e-commerce you know uh easily people can uh, you know carry out their business online the online marketplace uh and payment gateway i've also made it easier for business you know to sell their products and services across board uh, so uh all of these have, have proven that uh you know fintech uh, is, is actually one, uh, you know, uh, uh, innovation for finance that we can actually, actually not, you know, overlook, uh, you know, access to credit as well. You know, people now have alternative, uh, you know, uh, technology platform to actually access soft loan, you know, uh, to, to, to carry out, uh, you know, one or two financial, uh, you know, needs, you know. So investment in weather management has also proven, you know, because of uh, the online trading platform as well that, fintech innovation has also brought in. So all of this has proven that uh, uh, fintech is, 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 one, is one particular industry that, uh, you know, is really, really shaping uh, the future of finance in Nigeria. And then we just have to, uh, you know, take a very good look at, at the industry and see how much of opportunity does it still present for us in the future. All right. It's good you've talked about um, the opportunities uh, that are uh, abound uh, for or from fintech in the future. Let's look at that nation's financial inclusion drive. The federal government has been pushing that uh, for quite a while now. So what sort of collaboration do you think uh, needs to be bridged to ensure that um, we get um, all, uh, all, um, all Nigerians uh, in this uh, financial inclusion drive? Uh, yeah, um, there is a need for you know uh, you know regulatory uh, you know uh, functions. You know the regulators. Well, one of the very important challenge that we've seen, uh, you know, is that the regulator has not really entrenched you know uh, a, a more holistic um, a regulatory framework for the fintech industry. So there must be a very thorough uh, regulatory function. The regulator must regulate well, and there must be also a very great collaboration among fintechs, especially in the area of. Uh, technology, you know, innovation sharing, you know, technology sharing, and then again, uh, multi diverse stakeholders. You know, we need to have a diverse stakeholder, uh, you know, uh, uh, program whereby uh, we are able to identify, uh, you know, the players, uh, investors, uh, you know, regulatory, you know, agencies that might be relevant to how, uh, you know, a fintech can actually also improve our financial services in Nigeria. And again, that needs to be 
you know, a more awareness, you know, a more awareness about how financial technology can actually help people who are underbanked, you know, who are underserved, and uh, and see that uh, you know enough awareness is actually there. And again, you know, there must be also thorough risk management because one of the very challenge that we've seen is that uh, as much as uh, fintech has enabled a seamless payment uh, process, of course, there have also been some very very much increase in some of the security related issue that has to do with fraud. So there must be a thorough, uh, you know, uh, fraud and, uh, prevention management program. Uh, and then uh, the, the fintech organization, I mean, companies also have to ensure that uh, they tighten all their losing in order to ensure that uh, their customers' data, their customers' money are not just moving within the swift, uh, you know, of here. And again, because of the introduction of 5G, you know, you definitely experience, uh, you know, a, a more increase in uh, fintech services. And then again, uh, payment system is also going to be, uh, you know, the swiftness of payments is also going to be very, very much high now, you know. So all of these have, have shown that there are a lot of opportunity. We just have to ensure that uh, there are more regulatory frameworks in place, uh, you know, a multi, multi sector regulatory framework that come from different, past, I mean, different industry players to ensure that uh, we, we are able to, uh, you know, have an holistic uh, output of our, our fintech industry. All right, you will agree with me, Tunji, that um, Nigerians are very talented people and uh, what with the state of the economy and uh, inflationary pressures, uh, there's this uh, Jack Bass syndrome. So there, there have been talks about um, investment more in talent development and the need for fintechs to be more structured, to explore viable frameworks and adopt a strong management approach. What do you really think, Tunji? Yeah, um, Jack Bass syndrome. Uh, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't limit uh, our our potentials, and we can't limit our experts. Of course, we have to harness them. You know, we need to really harness them. And I know that uh, you know uh, agencies uh, in Nigeria like NICTA, uh, CBN, um, you know, fintech association on, on 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 timely basis and often they come up with uh, you know hackathon whereby they uh, allow young potential, young Nigerians who have innovation in, you know, not just only in fintech, you know, you know across uh, other areas of technology, uh, you know, innovations, you know, so to come up with, uh, you know, a product uh, and then, you know, pitch it and, 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 and uh, possibly find a way to actually sell it to the market. Of course, this has also been some very important thing that we need, but of course, there is a need for us to really have a, you know, proper framework for how we harness our, you know, skills. And again, uh, you know, because we are now in a global community, and uh, the workforce has actually moved, you know, from 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 the conventional method that we used to do. You know, not necessarily somebody has to be in an office before they can actually deliver any job. You know, so the fact that you you have potential who possibly leave the show the show the country to another nation uh, doesn't really mean that they can still not provide you know innovation technology for the country we just need to have a holistic framework in place in order to identify our talent even when they you know decided to you know, take their expertise somewhere else uh, we can still have them in the pool of our talent and then still continue to engage them to make use of their skills in order to better uh, innovation as regards to our financial services in our country all right, at the FinTech Week 2023, uh, you know, some of the themes, uh, some of the topics that uh, took front um, burner included uh, how emerging technologies like artificial intelligence can enhance security, enable regulation to power innovation in data insights. Good thing you are a cybersecurity expert. Can you share some of your thoughts? Yeah, of course, no doubt, uh, AI and ML are, you know, are also very you know, innovative and, and emerging technology that also has its own, uh, both as much as it has its own pros, it has its own cons. We just need to understand, uh, you know, how much of uh, what we really need it for, you know. So, of course, uh, you know, AI uh, can actually come up, I mean, help you in, the, you know, uh, fraud uh, prevention and detection in real time, in real time, real time monitoring. We are not talking about, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, after after incident has occurred, we are now trying to uh, do an incident analysis, but, you know, AI, Technology can actually help in, in, in fraud prevention uh, to uh, ensure that, that there's a fraud prevention and detection uh, mechanism in place that can be in real time. Then again, machine learning, you know, to analyze big data and, you know, spot anomalies, identify, uh, you know, if there has been any uh, changes in data. Then all of these have actually, you know, ML, AI can actually help fintechs in, you know, in managing uh, a security aspect of, of, of the fintech because of the technology underlying risk, you know, 
And then again, the risk management aspect of it, you know, there's there are automation, uh, risk management, uh, you know, compliance uh, solution now, which leveraging AI, you know, in order to ensure that uh, uh, organization, not just only fintech, you know, but um, in perspective, looking at fintech industry, can actually help you, in, you know, in ensuring that monitoring your compliance, you know, are you, co are you truly compliant with regulatory demand, regulatory functions, you know, all of this, you know, uh, definitely has come to play, and they're also going to help uh, the financial technology industry in uh, you know in monitoring uh, in their systems in order to ensure that uh, as much as they are you know uh, servicing their customer they're also servicing their customer with security in mind all right it is still business insights on plus tv africa we still have a lot to we'll take a quick break and we'll come back we'll look at uh, the need for diversification of um, product and of course how internet uh, penetration is also affecting uh, the the fintech and roles uh, in the country in a moment we're right back stay with us All right, thanks for staying with us. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We still have Ola Tunji with us. Now, Tunji, let me just reel out some figures and I want you to react uh, to some of the issues that we have or maybe th challenges, as it were. And maybe you could offer some um, opportunities that we can explore from there. Uh, FinTech Global Research indicated that as a the second quarter of this year, Nigeria attracted 42% of the fintech deals in Africa, making it the most active destination on the continent. There are now some 250 active fintech firms and over 6,000 startups registered with various acceleration incubation hubs and fintech services institutions. This is a great news, uh, Tunji, but then again, how would you really say um, the effect of um, internet penetration is affecting fintech um, business in the country yeah um just like i mentioned um uh, uh of course there are still so you know the the, the broadband deep penetration issue is still there um we still have quite large numbers of uh unbanked and uh, you know underserved uh citizens who have not really been able to uh you know make use of uh the innovations that fintech has present uh to carry out their financial uh, you know, seamless financial transaction and services, especially, you know, uh, the, the people in the remote area who are, you know, the one coming out with, uh, you know, products, you know, more, more like, uh, you know, uh, first-hand product now. And then again, the ability to be able to get their product, you know, even sell their product online without any middleman, uh, you know, coming come, come to play, you know, uh, uh, has also really, really limit, uh, you know, that opportunity. But so it is important that... Uh, uh, relevant agencies, uh, you know, ministry that are, that are important in the deep broadband penetration also uh, make effort in ensuring that uh, uh, we are able to penetrate, uh, you know, the remote area so as to be able to reach out to the underbank, uh, the underserved, uh, you know, uh, Nigerians. Uh, and again, uh, with the introduction of fifth generation uh, technology, uh, you know, the 5G, I, I also believe it's also going to be a very good, um, uh, you know, it's going to actually increase uh, you know, uh, fintech services and fintech customers, you know, exponentially, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, the high latency rate of how the technology is going to work, uh, and then considering the fact that most of it is going to be using the fiber, uh, you know, connection, uh, you know, services. So, uh, this is also very important for us to, to, to look at, uh, but it's important to identify that uh, even though there are a lot of investors coming in to invest in the fintech services in Nigeria, expanding the fintech industry, we also, the, the agencies that are relevant to the deep bank penetration also need to play their own role very well so that, you know, the financial inclusion can easily be achieved within the stipulated time. All right, as we go now, um, Olatunji, you will also agree with me that innovation is actually the lifeline of uh, the fintech um, ecosystem. Talking about innovation and how fintech uh, companies can, you know, reinvent themselves as it were, I just want you to talk for one minute concerning them, um, how they can collaborate to diversify product offerings. Yeah, of course, um, uh, there are much we can actually do uh, when we collaborate and compete, you know, and, and this is one very important principle uh, that we, uh, you know, at Sebit, you know, try to uh, leverage on. Uh, we rather collaborate than compete because we understand that in collaboration, we are able to expand, you know, our services, we are able to, you know, share knowledge, we are able to share uh, ideals and, and principle innovations that will better, you know, meet the needs of, of customers, you know. So it is important to, for us to, to, to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, knowledge sharing, 
uh, you know, data data knowledge sharing in a responsible manner, you know, ensuring that even there is a need for us to share data, we are sharing those data in a very responsible manner. And again, you know, uh, technology innovations too, uh, you know, you, you agree with me that mo most of what, you know, uh, FinTech services rely on is around the API service. So, you know, API, you know, related technology. All right, uh, we seem to have um, lost um, um, a lot of key there, but uh, there is also the need for fintech companies to explore new sectors like agri-tech, intro-tech, and of course, uh, blockchain adoption was also encouraged at this year's uh, fintech week. Uh, do we still have um, a lot of key? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I just want you to just wrap up your thoughts because we lost you at some point. Yeah, just conclude what you were saying. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. So I, I, I was trying to, to mention that I mean we, we can do a lot with collaboration and competition, okay. uh, uh, especially when it comes to technology innovation uh, sharing. Uh, you know, leveraging technology sharing is something that is going to actually help the fintech industry to also grow uh, more in terms of uh, you know ensuring that uh, uh, we have uh, an holistic frameworks. And also at the same time, we also have a deep broadband penetration. Then again, we also try to diversify, like you mentioned, you know, some of the you know industrial sector that has not really been been a leader of focus. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, industry can come together and begin to say, let's innovate. You know, let's let's innovate about this industry, uh, be about this sector, and let's come up with a solution to better serve uh, the real player in those industry. So right. much more. Uh, collaboration uh, bigger than competition. That's right. one of the very important things right. that I think that is going to actually help the industry to move right. forward. Thank you so much, Tenji. Indeed, there's a whole lot that can be explored and lots of opportunities for the fintech sector. We do appreciate yes. your time. Uh, Ola Tenji Igbalojobi, he is uh, the uh, Chief Information and Security Officer at MCRP. Thanks for all of um, the input and insights that you have shared today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, and that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadunye. Many thanks for being there.